2.4 Puzzle Time Worksheet. Went over four examples in class. So let me go over those with you. Please jump down to number six on there. Again, if you're printing it off, uh, you can just print and write on it. If you don't have a printer, go ahead and just write out the work. So on a piece of paper, you could just put down the number six. And you could write out this problem, which you can view here in the video as well as on the weekly agenda and in the bit.ly code. There's a little three here, which will come into focus in a second. It's an exponent, so please put three little lines with time signs in between of it. We need the negative 0.8. We need whatever's inside the parentheses three times because of that exponent of three because of the power of three. You and I are going to take negative 0.8 times negative 0.8 times negative 0.8. To do that, we're going to take them two at a time. We're going to take these first two and multiply them. So you've got 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, or 8 tenths times 8 tenths. I'm going to leave the negatives behind. I'm going to come back to that. 8 times 8 is 64. Carry the 6. And as we've talked about previously, it's not 64, and it's not 6.4. Count up the number of decimal places. Since there are two of them, your answer needs one, two decimal places. Thus, when you take and multiply negative 0.8 times negative 0.8, I'm going to write it up here, I apologize, you get 0.64. Again, looking at these two, did they have the same sign? They did, so it's a positive. Now you've got to take 0.64 or 64 hundredths times negative 8 tenths. And do that off to the side. 64 hundredths times 8 tenths or 0.8. Notice how the numbers line up again when we're multiplying. All the numbers, not the decimal, because when we multiply these away, that's where we're going to get this 2. Carry the 3, 48 plus 3 is 51. Don't go looking. Our final answer is not 512. Don't go looking for it. How many decimal places are there total? One, two, three. There are three numbers total after the decimal. One, two, three. Your answer needs to have three numbers after the decimal place. Don't go looking. Before I box it up, we're going to go back up here. Did they have the same sign? No. means we need a negative number. That gives us a negative point. 512, a negative 5, and, sorry, negative 512 thousandths. Go ahead and cross that off. You're only going to use that answer once. There will be more than one letter, perhaps, but only this answer once. A number 6, go ahead and put the letter H there. Then jump to the back. We're going to do number 7. As a reminder, we don't divide mixed numbers or fractions. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. We're going to multiply by the flip. Keep, change, and the reciprocal or flip is 4 over 1. Let me rewrite that so you can see it. Now that we're multiplying, now I'll look diagonal. Can we cancel anything out between the 5 and the 1? Nope. How about the 8 and the 4? Well, yes, we can take a 4 out of both of them. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1. Now you can multiply those top numbers. 5 times 1 to get 5. 1 times 2 to get 2. And now we ask ourselves, how many times can 2 go into 5? Two whole times, thus the whole number. 2 times 2 is 4. Take it away from the top. You have 2 and 1 half. Go back. Don't go looking. Go back here. Did the fractions have the same sign? We ask ourselves, do they have the same sign? And if we say no, what type of number do we need? A negative. 2 and 1 half is our final answer for number 7. The letter S on the other side, so cross off that S and fill it in for number 7, S. In class, I did number 11 because I said it was like a level 4 question with these large numbers. When dividing fractions, excuse me, when dividing decimals, the first number 
is what we focus on. The first number is your number that goes inside. It's the dividend. The second number goes on the outside, to the denominator, it's the divisor. And we're set up from there, but if the bottom number, if the second number has a decimal, if there's a decimal out here in the divisor, move it twice. So that way, you move it twice on the outside, so we have no decimal. Move it twice on the inside, bring that decimal straight up. And I'm going to help you with this one. 285 goes into 541 one time. You don't have to do this math on your own. I'm going to take care of it and help you out with that. Minus 285, you're left with 256. Notice how your remainder is smaller than your divisor. The remainder is smaller than the number on the outside. That's what we need. If it's not, then we've done something wrong. Bring the 5 down, and instead of having to try to figure out and guess and check on your own, I'm going to tell you it goes in there 9 times, and that 9 times 285, 9 times 285 is 2,565. The answer isn't 19, it's not point .19. Notice how the numbers are on top of each other, the decimals, everything gets stacked on top, keep them all lined up. Did these two numbers have the same sign? Yes, so then it's a positive 1.9, positive 1 and 9 tenths is the letter W. So for number 7, we'll put in the number, excuse me, the letter W. And then lastly, this is the one I decided halfway through the day to keep doing with everyone. To find the area of a room or a square, we're going to take the length times the width. In this case, we're going to take 10 and 3 fourths times 8 and 1 half. Remember, before we can do anything with mixed numbers, they have to be improper. Before you do anything with dividing, make them improper. Before we do our fraction dance and multiply the top numbers by the bottom numbers, they must be just fractions. So take 10 times 4 to get 40. Add it to the top. For 43 over 4 times 8 times 2 gives us 16. Add it to the top. We get 17 over 2. And now here's where we're multiplying, and they're just fractions. So now we'll go diagonal like the time sign. Is there anything between 43 and 2 we can cancel out? Anything in common? No. Bummer. How about the 4 and the 17? Anything we can cross cancel between those two? No, well, that's quite cruel because now we've got large numbers. If you were doing this on your own, you'd have to come over here and do double digit multiplication. But I'm helping you with this one, so I'm just going to tell you that it's 731. 4 times 2, we can do that one. That's 8. Now, if you were doing this on your own, again, you'd have to take 731 divided by 8 and figure out how many times... 8 can go into 731, but I'm going to tell you that it's 91 times. So put a big old giant 91, and whether you're doing it here and listening to me, or if uh, you're doing it like long division over here, when you take 91 times 8, you get 728, subtract them away, you have a remainder 3, which we have here as well if you were doing long division. I'm going to put that over the number 8, your divisor, the denominator. Because it's area, the label should be feet squared. You won't find a label on the worksheet because that would give it away. But you will find 91 and 3 eighths to be the letter D for number 13. Again, remember the rules for a joke worksheet. Once you know the answer, don't shout it out, even if you're at home, or maybe if you're at home and the only one doing it, you can shout it out and say, oh, that was funny, or share it with your family. Otherwise, rule number two, which is most important for your grade, once you know this joke, don't just write it on in. I need to see the work for all these problems. Need to see the fractions turned improper and cross-canceling. Need to see you multiplying these out. Need to see the 
making them improper and then doing your multiplying by the reciprocal, the keep, change, and then the flipping on all of these. Don't just get the answer and be done. You need to show me the work as well.